Hello, this is William Cooper. Welcome to Awakening Together, Relaxing into Happiness. I trust you're doing well today. Let's talk about manifestation. We're always manifesting all the time. The external reflects the internal. There are two factors to manifestation that are very powerful. The first is clarity, which is clear intent. And the second is clear power. When you focus clear power and run it through a clear lens of intent, you manifest a clear result. Just like at a movie theater, if you shine a clear, powerful white light through a clear film, you manifest a clear and vivid movie on the screen. This is what we do on the screen of our life. If you want to know what's going on inside of you, just look outside of you. The external reflects the internal. So you're a very good manifester. It's already happening. It's not something you do. It's something you're already doing. Mostly when people talk about how to manifest, they're wanting to bring some scientific principles so that you can clarify your manifestation and guide it in a direction that you might enjoy more. So let's talk about it in those terms. As I was saying before, if you're muddy on the inside, you'll be muddy on the outside. And there are these two major factors. Clear power shining through a clear lens. What makes us muddy? What keeps our power from being clear and our lens being clear? Well, if we're muddy inside, it's because we're separated from ourselves, right? We are the power of the universe all the time. And to the degree that we don't experience explosive power and infinite clarity, because the universe knows what it's doing, it's very clear. So to the degree that we do not experience ourselves as both of these things, clear power and clear intent, it's a clue that we're separated from ourselves. How do we become clear? Well, we've talked about it in so many podcasts before. Sit down and meditate. Stop. Stop distracting ourselves. Stop getting lost in our own fantasies and daydreams. Stop and just watch our thoughts. Let them dissolve because thoughts are helpful tools, but ultimately they're hallucinations that we form. Same with emotions. So they're helpful, but when they run amok and we can't control them, they're delusions that are a little out of control. And so we're muddy, and our creation is muddy, and our life is muddy. And we suffer because we're separated from ourselves, and therefore, to a large degree, separated from infinite bliss, power, wellness, peace, happiness, so on and so forth. We're living on crumbs. We get a little happiness, a little bliss, a little of this, a little of that, a little of clear creation. It's just a little of everything and not much, probably more suffering. So as that background, I would say meditate and become clear because when you're not manifesting the things that you really want in your life, you're both not clear and you're not powerful. So the way to solve that is to stop, burn off that which is distracting you and become clear. Nonetheless, Let's talk about different ways to manifest in our process of becoming more clear. Because even if we're not clear, we are manifesting. So what do we do from here? What's our first step in the world of manifesting? Well, Joseph Campbell coined the word or the phrase, follow your bliss. Because in our first step of manifestation, we're doing it on a physical level. We might not be interested in spirituality. We might not know much about anything. Yet, we want to accomplish things in the world. 
and we're doing it through power because we are moving in the world. Life force is animating our body. But how do we powerfully manifest certain things? You'll see business leaders, maybe some of them aren't concerned with spirituality at all, but they accomplish great things or political leaders or other people. How do they do that? Well, you unleash powerful energy when you follow your bliss. Because the blocks are out of the way because it's something you really want to do. You can't get up soon enough in the morning because it's blissful. You want to do this. You have a passion for what you're doing. When you have a passion for what you're doing, you obviously know what it is that you're doing. So you have a clear focus, you have a clear lens, and you have a clear power. Even if you're not spiritual, even if you're not meditating, if you just did that, follow your bliss, you will manifest very, very powerfully. And as you manifest powerfully, there's a law of the universe, and you've noticed it in your life, I'm sure, but every time you move forward, in a productive way, somehow we meet resistance. And what's going on is as we move forward, we expand inside, we clarify, we get more clear, we become more powerful and congruent. But why weren't we that way before? Well, it was because we had inner blocks. So as we move forward, we hit those inner blocks that were holding us back in the past, and now we have to deal with these things. As we deal with these things, we become more expansive, more powerful, and clearer. So the process of manifesting itself brings us to more and more clarity, beginning more and more power, beginning more and more clarity, and stronger and clearer manifestations. Our life picks up momentum. Again, even if we're not spiritual at all, don't care about this, this is a process that happens because life itself is designed to bring us into clarity, regardless of what our starting point is. And manifestation is sort of the carrot that moves us forward. We want to have a good life. We want to create the things that we would enjoy. We want to follow our bliss. So Joseph Campbell can say that simple thing, follow your bliss. And I think most everybody, all of us, resonate with that. And we want to do that. So this is the first step to manifestation. It applies to all people. And as you manifest more, as you become more clear, perhaps spirituality becomes um, more relevant to you, or maybe it always was. Either way, let's look at another way uh, to manifest, and that's the power of prayer. You'll notice that the power of prayer will also have these two features, clear intent and dropping as many internal barriers so that your power is also very clear. How does this happen in the power of prayer? Well... First, you connect to the power of the divine. Yes, it's true. In oneness, you find that you are the universe, or I should say the universe is you. That power runs universally through you, and so you don't have to connect to somebody else because you are one. You are all things. There's nobody else to connect to. And since all is you, there is no God to connect to. It's all you. But before you actually are experiencing that direct experience of oneness, it's helpful to connect to something that you're convinced is the power of the universe. And so often people will connect to the divine, which is the most powerful thing they know to connect to. And once connected to the divine, they feel that power, they experience that power, and then they can focus that power through their prayer, and their prayer is asking for a very clear intent. It's a clear lens. So you have infinite power, 
going through a very specific and clear lens, and you get an answer, the power of prayer. As far as blocks are concerned in reference to praying, I came across something very interesting in India over and over and over. What they would do is say, you know, if you're connecting to the divine and it's blocking you, you're not going to manifest very well. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're praying to a male god that you feel is kind of severe and judgmental. Maybe it reminds you or reflects experiences you've had in your life of judgmental, powerful males. If fundamentally deep inside you're afraid of these males, maybe they abused you or treated you badly, then you're going to be shut down to some degree. And if you're shut down, what happens to the power of your prayer? It doesn't go very far. So what they would say in India is, Connect to a form of the divine that you feel comfortable with. In India, they have a thousand different gods or more. You pick which one you want. There's really only one god in their viewpoint. And at some point, even that god disappears into nothing, into beyond existence. But things are on many different uh, realities. So if you go just far enough to get to the highest reality where quote-unquote gods exist, connect to the most powerful and comfortable one. Connect to one that's your friend, that you can trust. Since you're connecting to a god that you feel comfortable with and trust, it's a resistance-free portal, almost like a fiber optic, to the one god which is all-powerful, and that power is released to manifest your dreams through your clear intent or prayer. So they would say, find a God that you can trust and connect to that God. Ask for what you want, and therefore you're bypassing blocks. Now, if there's not a particular God that you feel comfortable connecting to, or you just don't like the concept they say, design your own God. They're just trying to get that power flowing. Design your own God, a friend. Picture it as your favorite dog or a cat. That's very powerful, I suppose. Uh, I'm exaggerating in a way, but in a way I'm not. You design your own God. That makes sense to you. For some people, the concept of God is inappropriate. It just doesn't resonate. So... With the same uh, spirit, you can connect to existence or universal power or life force. You design or connect to whatever word you want to use, whatever label. You do it in a way that opens up power for you. Until you absolutely have the direct experience of yourself as the universe to the degree that you don't feel that, connect to that which you do feel so that the infinite power can move through your clear lens. Continuing with the method of manifestation through prayer is that you would want to admit on an internal level the reason why you're praying. Maybe it's because you're greedy Maybe it's because you're embarrassed. Maybe it's because you feel powerless. Maybe it's because you're jealous. Maybe it's because you feel great lack. All of these things are symptoms of separation, and that's true. But rather than having to wait some time to heal them, you just admit them. And when you admit them to yourself and to your divine or your power, it gets it up front. It gets it out into the open and when blocks are not repressed and they're brought out into the open, they can relax and open up. It's just, you know, that's the way it is now. That's deep acceptance. And in acceptance, there's a flow. So that's a way to open yourself up on the inside and flow with great power through the lens of clarity because you're praying for a specific thing.
In addition, if you pray from great need, let's say great pain or hurt or great compassion or love, you're praying for a loved one. These kind of prayers are very powerful, aren't they? We've all been there. And when you pray from this very powerful, clear and sincere way, again, great power going through a very focused and clear lens and manifestation is bound to happen on the screen of your life. So you pray in this way. And finally, when you pray, you picture the result that you want, that's clarity of intent, you picture it as having already happened, not something that you're waiting to happen. Because if you picture it as something that you're waiting to happen, you're actually projecting something that hasn't happened. You want what you want to project what it is you want, what you're asking for. And what you're asking for, you can see it clearly as it already has happened. And picture it that way, very vividly pictured as you want it to have happened. Putting all these pieces together manifests the power of of prayer. Now, as we pray, just as we were manifesting in a physical way, as my first example, moving through the world, we start to bump up against our limitations, those things that were blocking us in the first place. In order to relax and let our prayer flow nicely, we have to deal with those things and let them relax and go. They're revealed as we pray. Although the power of prayer does help bypass a lot of these things by connecting to a God that's all powerful, that we feel comfortable with, and admitting why we're praying, and having a very clear intent, so clear that we can see the event that we're praying for already having happened. That will bypass a lot of things. But nonetheless, if we bump into something, we can sit still and meditate. We watch it, and awareness is curative. Under the powerful silent light of awareness, those things start to dissolve, and those blocks uh, no longer exist. We relax them out of our system. Again, we've talked about that in many podcasts in the past, and if you're not familiar with my earlier podcast, I would say go back and listen to some of them and bring yourself up to speed if some of this is new to you. We're going to go through some more evolution of manifestation um, in the next podcast. And because these will overlap with each other, I think all through our lives, all through our existence on this earth, we utilize these various forms of manifestation and some more than others, uh, especially as we evolve and our vibration becomes higher and higher. It's more rooted in love, peace, well-being and happiness rather than anger, fear and hurt, which is the vibration of separation. In the end, in creation, we have two things that we're doing. We're enjoying existence. That's the first thing. And the second thing is we are becoming one with existence and we strobe from one to the other. Enjoyment, we have to be separate so that we can taste the chocolate. Somebody has to be separate to be able to taste the chocolate. And then we strobe back into we are the chocolate and we feel the bliss of creation. We feel the enjoyment of tasting chocolate, and then we feel the bliss of being chocolate. Uh, we strobe back and forth. In oneness and awakening, we are the chocolate. We are everything. In separation, we are the enjoyer of existence. There's a role for all of these uh, positions, the enjoyer and being one with that which is being enjoyed, existence itself, and being beyond all of that, being beyond existence. So we can hold all of these positions very lightly because they're all true of us. We don't have to hold anything. 
it's in clarity we experience all of these things. So in the next podcast, I'd like to talk about manifesting through the law of attraction, then manifesting through the spoken word or conscious languaging. And then I would like to talk about manifesting through the law of vibration. And then I would like to talk about manifesting through oneness. So um, we'll see how many we get done in the next podcast. But we're going to pick up from here. You might enjoy the support of my website, www.williamecooper.wordpress.com. On the resource page, I will have posted some links on different amazing meditations and a great book on manifesting from different positions on the spectrum. In addition, anytime you can just Google manifesting and you're going to find some amazing meditations, very effective, and different uh, approaches will focus from these different vantage points that we're talking about. But I wanted to go through the dynamics of what's actually going on because it fits in our path of awakening. It all fits together. In one sense, it's all kind of the same thing, but different ways of manifesting in our existence in this world. And so it's good to understand, to see clearly, you become awake. And then you can manifest more easily in your life in a way that makes sense to you. Okay, I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Take care. Bye. Hello, this is William. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please consider sharing it with somebody else. Send them a link. Thanks so much.